side, the issue, special edition of Tucker Carlson tonight, the people who run the tech industry already know a lot more about you and your neighbors and your family than the East German Stasi ever could have dreamed. But they're always looking for more information. And for most people, the smartphone is the way they get it. Your phone doesn't just track where you go, though it does do that. It can also listen in on your conversations, your in-person conversations, and use them to decide which ads you see online. Brett Larson hosts Fox News Headlines 24-7 on Sirius XM Radio. He frequently investigates tech stories for us. So, Brett Larson, I know this can't be true because we've suspected this for a long time, yeah. but the industry has denied it repeatedly. Right. But you're saying it is real? They, they have denied, 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 but every time someone sits down and researches it, it seems it is actually happening. That the conversations that you're having in front of your smartphones are being listened to, and then advertisements uh, appropriate to the conversations you had will pop up the next time you go online. Wait, can, can, I, can I just interrupt you just to yeah. make sure I have this right? So this is not when you're speaking to Siri, not when you're talking to the right. phone, but when your phone is sitting on a table in a restaurant yeah, in your like home. Yeah, like right here, and you don't hear me. Even now, but how is that legal? You know, here's the thing. This is where, and when we had Mark Zuckerberg in Congress, Congress said over and over these end user agreements that we all just kind of click through and we don't pay attention. For what we know, it could be buried in there, but it could be buried in there in such a way that you don't really understand what they're saying. When, when you open an app for the first time, when you download the Facebook app, for example, and you open it for the first time, it may say, Facebook app would like access to your camera and your microphone. And logically, you're going to think, oh, it's because I want to put pictures on Facebook directly from the app. But buried in that license agreement, it may say flat out, and, well, you know, it's, we're, we're listening to the things going on around you when you post your photos so that we can uh, take the mood of the room or so that you're not posting a, a silent movie, basically. Uh, but th this reporter at Vice Media did the same thing, and, and he did it the same way all of us have heard this story over and over, these anecdotal things of like, you know, I was talking about wanting to go to Japan, and the next thing I know, I'm in front of my computer and there's all these ads for cheap flights to Japan. And most of us dismiss it of like, there's no way that could be happening. Zuckerberg's in Congress, he says, there's no way we're not listening to you. But other researchers have found that a lot of these apps are actually listening to us, and they're also paying attention to how we interact with the app. They're going to excuse it away. They're paying attention to how we use the app. They want to make the app a better user experience. I totally get that. They're listening to us. Our phones are always listening to us because they're listening for that magic word. They're listening for, OK, Google, to alert the virtual assistant, or, hey, Siri, which if I say my phone's going to, now there it goes. It's, it's, what can I help you with? But in order for my phone to hear me say that, it's got to be listening to me all the time. So it's a matter of what other apps are also listening and what are their, what they're called trigger words to get them to start paying attention. For all we know, the so, Facebook app trigger is, I'm thinking about, and then the next thing is what they're listening for. Yeah, but we do, I guess that's the point we don't know. Yeah, by they, the way, Congress banned lawn darts and clove cigarettes because they were a danger to the public, but they've done nothing about this because they're pathetic in the pocket of these companies. But let me ask, where does this data go? They it, have all your conversations, all your intimate conversations. What do they yeah. do with it? They, they take it back, they process it, and they sell you advertisements. That's, you know, when we did that investigation into Google and tracking your location, it's really about they want to know where you go, they want to know your routine, because then they have a more valuable sell to an advertiser. You're not just going to a fast food restaurant and saying, we're going to give you a 1,000 customers. You're going to a fast food restaurant right. and saying, we're going to give you 100 customers that absolutely walk past your store every day and 10 of them walk in once a week, and we know this for a fact. Now they can go a step further and say, of those 10 that we know walk into your store, one of them is actually talking in the morning about how he wants to get breakfast at your particular establishment, and they, they have all this data. Why would any sane person ever bring a smartphone <laughs> into a bedroom? No, I, seriously. I know, I know. It's, it's a valid question. And, and when you, Tucker, when you think about it, we've got baby cams, pet cams, all these things in our homes connected to the Internet. We don't know where that's going. So uh, my advice would be turn the phone off if you're bringing it in the bedroom because it is, it is probably listening to you. And I'm not trying to sound alarmist. I'm just trying to be realistic. I, well, you're the opposite of an alarmist. I'm not, I mean, I'm alarmed. I'm terrified. And I'm upset that Congress doesn't care enough to do something about this. Brett they Larson, need to get savvier you about your, it, indeed. You think? It's yeah, insane. Yeah. Thank you for your relentless investigations. I appreciate them. Thanks for having me.